My students pay six thousand bucks to hear me say this shit. So listen up. Here's what happens, guys. We have. Um, I get a lot of questions. You guys train with me two, three days a week, but some of these don't either don't train the rest of the week or are confused on what to do. Right? You go to the gym or your house. Here's the simplest way to think of training. And honestly, it's so simple. I don't know why more people don't do it, but this is it. There's only five things in the gym you can really do, and I could break them down, but there's something called hip dominant. Hip dominant is anything that affects the glutes and hamstrings or abductors. So side to side abduction with the band is abduction. Stiff leg deadlifts, hex bar deadlifts, kettlebell deadlifts, any type of deadlift or stiff leg deadlift, anything that affects the hamstrings, leg curls, hamstring exercise, that's hip dominant. Knee dominant, that's anything that affects the quads. So lunges, jumping, uh, walking lunges, box step ups, anything like that. Squats, that's knee dominant. Then there's upper body push, which is pretty self-explanatory. The shoulder press, push up, bench press. Then there's pull, obviously chin up, horizontal inverted rows, whatever. And then there's core. That's it. Anything you did today is in one of these. Name anything, and I can put it in a category. There's some hybrid exercise, meaning they might be both. Oh. <laughs> Best friends, that's what they're for. So honestly, now listen. Hip dominant, when you do lower body workouts, there's only three ways you can do lower body. You can do symmetrical, so I can do deadlifts or stiff leg deadlifts. You can do asymmetrical, think split squats. Or you can do single leg. Look how simple that is. So you might do single leg stand-ups, then you might do jumping split squats, asymmetrical, then you might do symmetrical, goblet squats. There's always methods to the madness. That's how simple it is for lower body. That's all you can do. And it can be hip or knee, or a little bit of both. Pushing and pulling is a little different now. One can be horizontal and vertical. What's a horizontal push? Horizontal to where your body is in space. So some people think if I do a standing band chest press, that's horizontally pushing. Because I'm vertical and I'm pushing horizontal. But if I'm on the floor, technically, I guess if you're thinking up and down, I look like I'm pushing vertically, but this is horizontal. Because look where my body is, it's still a horizontal push. Then there's a vertical push, which is what? Shoulder press. Simple. Same with pull. One can be horizontal, uh, inverted rows, what you just did today, and then one can be vertical. It's that simple. Core. Two ways to break up core, and there's a little mer more variation here, but there can be anti-rotation, which would be what? Side planks, right? Or pal-off press, because you're preventing rotation. Or there can be anti-extension. And I'm not saying it's, oh, it's never okay to flex extend, but ideal core work is, is tight. It's, a, it's isometric. So a plank you're fighting extension. And that's as simple as it is, guys. So when you go to the gym, if you train twice a week, a lot of times we'll do hip dominant and pulling. And then core, I'll do anti-extension. So this is what I would do for one day, say Tuesday night. The next night, what do I have left? Knee, push, and then anti-rotation. It's that simple, just break it up. But full body movements are ideal. None of these are here are bodybuilders, right? If you are, that's different. But Doing back and buys, that's old school shit. You gotta do a, do a leg, do a push, do a pull, do a core. And then go hard, that's why we do circuit training, it's more effective. Make sense? Yes sir. Alright, good stuff.